And we're live here on Facebook. I'd like to welcome those listening in podcast land. And I'd like to welcome my buddy Rich. Rich, how you doing tonight? Doing good, Mike. Long. Yeah, kind of a long, long, but a productive, busy week. I agree. It's a yard. Oh. Yeah. 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 Long, long but, week. It, but yeah, so uh, it'll be a short week. The next two weeks because of where I placed some time off. So nice. So yeah, so it'll be a good good way to end the month of July with two uh, two short weeks. Oh, you Mike, how, how are you? Does that mean three weeks in a row you have time off? Nope. Oh. Uh, I, I I'm taking Friday off because that's when we check into the cabin, and Monday is when we check out at the Goose Ranch. Okay. Um cabin so i'm taking that day off we'll have to talk offline about the week after that the weekend after all oh, right because we had talked about something but i didn't know if that would that might not be happening now we'll see okay and that's fine no big deal no no worries. So, so how how was your how was your week mike did, did, do you have the air conditioner fixed yet no or, or are you still still hanging out downstairs living in the basement <laughs> um, I mean, it's worse for my wife. She's here. She she's home most of the time, but it's. I mean, it's not terrible down here in the basement. And we have a window unit that keeps our living room fine. It's the bedrooms that are a little warm at the moment, but we'll make it work. I mean, gotcha. we're we're sleeping in the basement this week, and we'll sleep there most of next week. Next weekend can be a little warm, maybe, but. We'll make it work. So, um, but beyond that, uh, it's been a good week. Work was busy. Made a road trip today for work, which is a little, you know, whatever. But hey, Rich, did but we you ever paid to run some errands and and drive around a BMW though? So I did. I did <laughs> two BMWs. Two. All right. But uh, Rich. We got a big show this week. I mean, kind of. We've have, we have some. Yeah, we kind of do. We have some filler in there, um, and uh, well, I, I wouldn't even. I wouldn't call it filler though, because we. I mean, we, we uh, like you said last week. We got to start talking about the NFL. And we have. I mean, I was also gonna gonna move in with, uh, uh, move over to. Uh, we also have uh, golf. We're talking golf this week. At least a little bit. Um, we're going to talk NFL. Uh, and, uh, Rich, what else do we got this week? Uh, we, we're going to be talking uh, Cubs baseball. Ooh. Even though they're playing really bad, we got to talk Cubs baseball. And uh, we'll be talking some NASCAR as we got a, um, we had Atlanta last week, and we got New Hampshire coming up on Sunday. Yeah. All that and more. But first, let's roll the intro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich. And we're back. Okay, Rich, uh, we are down to our semi-final matchups in our poll yes, question. We, yes, we are. You kind of you kind of made things go a little quicker by putting three sh- three uh, songs a week on a bunch of these, uh, so it didn't go two years like it like the with the list that we had totally could have been two years worth of poll questions there. Oh, oh, oh but just wait, Mike. When we get more into maybe stadium songs, oh, oh, that that could go a long time, Mike. That could go a long time. I mean, yeah, but this week. We're we're back into the sports. Uh, we did have a poll this last week. It was Hot Rod Lincoln versus Jerry was a race car driver. Uh, yeah, Rich, our, our two NASCAR songs that won, or racing songs. Rich, do you have the 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 results of the poll question? Um, I got it. I, I, that's okay. okay. That's good because I, I was just about to say I don't. I voted for Jerry was a race car driver. As did I, sir. We were outvoted by one vote. Okay. 
and it was your dad and my mom and your wife. All right. All voted for Hot Rod Lincoln. Best thing, Jerry was a race car driver by Primus. I love Primus. Anyway. All right. Um, so that, that, as you alluded to, Mike, that does set up our semifinals. Yep. So this week, we're going to go with more Chicago, and we're going to go Go Cubs Go and be like Mike. Yeah. Yeah. And then next week, Cleveland Rocks, Hot Rob Lincoln, and take me out to the ball game. Yep. For the finals, to, to match up in the finals. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so vote for that. Look for that poll to go live uh, later to, later tonight, maybe tomorrow, probably tomorrow around noon, I'm guessing, is when you'll mm-hmm. do it. Okay. Um, do Rich, do you see what's coming up next? Mike, is it a left turn? It is a left turn. And after that? Oh, is it another left turn? It is, because we're heading into the NASCAR corner, presented as always by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois. Check them out on Fifth Avenue for all your sports memorabilia needs. Once again, that's Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Check them out on their eBay store. Recap for last week, Rich. We were we had the Quaker State 400 at Atlanta. Did you watch any of it? Um, I watched the last stage. It's more than I watched. Watch the last stage, and I gotta Ooh. tell you, I mean, I was somewhat, I was almost rooting for Corey LaJoy to pull off the upset and just throw the playoffs way out of whack by winning that race and getting in, making the playoffs as a, or at least having the having a better chance of making the playoffs, winning that race. Yeah. And so I, I gotta give it to him for at the end of the race be in a window to hopefully make a make a pass make a pass for the lead within the last couple of laps and and for a driver like Corey LaJoy you need to make those types of moves to win the races because you're not you're probably not going to get in on points because of how you perform week in and week out I totally agree I didn't even know that was a thing uh my week has been uh, far from NASCAR being involved, so I did not get to see a lot of it. But yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, man, uh, it's supposed to it's it's supposed to be more like a super speedway, uh, only on a smaller track. So it, when if you look at super speedways and the way that those work, uh, anybody can win those races. Anybody at all. So. Yeah, am I surprised? No. Okay. Um, this week we are talking about the Am Better 301. Uh, back it up, Mike. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. How, how did our drivers do in Atlanta, Mike? Okay, so Rich, yeah, okay, you just wanted to brag that you won again. No, we, we Your got Your Ryan a- Blaney finished fifth, Kevin Harvick finished tenth, and Chase Elliott with the win. I almost picked Chase Elliott. I almost did last week. Man, I'm just uh, letting myself right. get in my on, own head. Yeah. On the fantasy side, um, I won the day on fantasy in our league with 175. Uh, Dupo came in second with 172. The Funk House had 153. Mike, you didn't finish last as you got 147 as the Easers brought up the rear this year with, with this week with 132. I mean, that's good for me because – isn't he the one right ahead of me? So he's the one I got to beat. It's still by quite a bit of points. Yeah, that's all right. As, every uh, point as, counts, as, right? It, every point does count. As the Easers have thirty-one hundred plat. Mike, you got twenty-seven ninety-eight. Hey, I made up like ten points this week, so. You did. I, I'm in first place with thirty-four seventy-two. Second place is Dupo thirty-one forty-seven. And uh, and third is the Funk House, thirty-one thirty-three. So now, are we going to the Am Better? Yes. Am, now we can am talk better? about the Am Better race at New Hampshire, the is Magic it, Mile. Is it Am I a better like a gambling site, or is no, it I Am Better am, as in I get 
better when I go to a hospital? Yes, it, it is am better as in a healthcare. Okay. Am better. Okay. Well, never heard of it, but sure. Let's go. Um, they're going to be in New Hampshire this week. Rich, who do you like? What are you going for? You know, but this week, Mike, at the Magic Mile, I'm going to go with Joey Lugano. Looking at track history, he seems to finish within the top ten at that track. It's its home, it's its home track. Uh, so I think he's going to be the one hit, uh, holding up the giant lobster at the end of the race. Okay. Uh, he Hopefully he knows how to handle a lobster. Uh, I like William Byron. He's been uh, – a, a Hendricks car needs to do well there. So let's let's see it be him this week. Um, he kind of he needs the rebound too, as he hasn't really done well since he won his last race. Was it Martinsville? Yeah, and and there's a good possibility we end up with more than 16 drivers in the uh, in the play like with wins. And apparently, if there's more than 16 winners, they go based off of points after mm-hmm. win. So it's the amount of wins you have, then it's the amount of points you have. So you could be yeah. if you're not doing well. And you have a win. You could be looking on the out for, on the outside looking in. Here's my yeah. problem, though, NASCAR. You have told these guys if you win, you're in. That's what you've told them. Put them in. Make that first round. We're dropping to eight. Screw the. We only have sixteen. Put twenty guys in. Give 20 guys a chance. I don't care. You have 20 winners. Let 20 winners get the chance to be in the playoffs. Why not? Who does that hurt? It means that winning means something. Because let's say you're William Byron and you win a you win a race early. And or you a guy like Austin Cindric, the guy that wins what the last two years. Austin yeah. Cendrick this year, Michael McDowell last year. They won the Daytona 500, yep. and then they were mediocre to average the rest of the year. I, I would even say beyond that, I, I would say beyond that. Let's say you try things. You go for that second win, and you run out of fuel. They want people to go for wins, right? Mm-hmm. So if I go for a win, and I end up running out of fuel... And because of that, I'm now one point from the lead, from being in the playoffs. Then that win would have mattered, but it doesn't matter. Let them all in. Come on, NASCAR. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I can agree with you, Mike, because they make the first cut a lot more competitive. Right. You're not just going to see the normal three three four drivers knocked out you could see five drivers knocked out because you had to add extra cars into the playoffs yeah to do the victories and um and and again i don't know I, I i need to look into this and maybe i'll do the homework this week hopefully i can do this but let's say you're the you're the guy that uh let's say you are that that guy that who the you're, you're that Michael McDowell last year. You get into the playoffs. Let's say you went for stage you went for stage points that don't actually count until the playoffs. What about that? You got a stage win. You go like, come on now, if you're gonna make it happen, make those wins count. Period. Um, okay, getting off of that soapbox, let's talk. We have other big news in NASCAR. Um, a guy has signed a year and a half in advance of before he'll even be in the other be a, be able to go. He's not even eligible to leave next year. His contract is not up next year, and yet he's already signed to another team yeah Tyler Reddick uh, signed with the Michael Jordan Denny Hamlin team's 23 XI but he won't drive 
a car with them until 2024. By the and way, if they if they keep their current stable of drivers, where what car is he going to drive, Mike? So that brings up a great point. What are they going to do? We don't actually know yet. Um, there are teams that might have a so in order to put a team out there you you have to be able to you have to have a charter and you might you can buy a charter so if rich if you and i had a bajillion dollars we could go out and buy a team buy put together a car that could win a race but if we don't have a charter that allows our team to play to race in nascar we're up the creek without a paddle so they can either potentially and I, again i don't know if nascar is gonna is gonna be willing to let us go back up to 43 cars or if they're gonna keep it at the current state that fluctuates but uh, maybe they'll let us get back up to 43 cars and they'll just let people buy new charters they'll start new charters or they can go out and buy a charter from another team or a team that that may be struggling that has multiple and merging, cars and, and merging operations kind of like what happened with gms and petty yeah kind of speaking of gms and petty so 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 uh, one more thing with reddick though yeah so when reading the story about it, it seemed like Denny Hamlin and whoever the financial backers are, along with Jordan, they may almost made it sound like we got the guy we wanted. Yeah. We'll figure out where we're going to place him in 24. Yeah, that's 100% that, that, what they, they that's did. 24, that's 24's problem, not yep. not right now. So if you're... If you're um, so other options that could happen. Children's racing. Yeah. Do you want him? Do you want to keep him around for 23 under contract? Yes. Knowing that he's going to leave, or would you no. want to put someone in the seat that could stay there long term? You want the guy in the seat that is going to provide your team the best opportunity to win a championship. Period. That's what your goal is. I don't know somebody. I don't know anybody that's going to be available. I don't know what that looks like. But Tyler Reddick is a good driver. That's that man in that seat driving that car gives you a good opportunity to win races and winning races gives you the opportunity to make the playoffs and making the playoffs gives you the best opportunity to make. You can't win a championship if you don't make the playoffs. You got to win a race to make the playoffs. Tyler Reddick gives you a good opportunity to win almost every week as long as you give him a good car. So, yeah, I, I like it. Um, the question becomes, do they push out Bubba Wallace? I, I don't think so. I think Michael likes Bubba. I don't think he likes – he sees that competitive nature in Bubba and, and wants it, wants to keep it there. So then you move on to Kurt Busch. Well, Denny Hamlin has made it well known, his love for Kurt, Kurt Busch. And, and what he has said is that Kurt can stay there as long as he wants. Right. That's what I've read. That's what I've read as well. I mean, personally, when I saw the whole Denny Hamlin Michael Jordan partnership come around, I guess I and saw Kurt Busch signed as the second car. Is the way I almost saw it was that once I, I kind of was starting to put two and two together that is Kurt's contract running the same length as Joe as a. Uh, Denny Hamlin's was at at Joe Gibbs. So when both of their contracts are up, Denny could say, hey, thanks for keeping the seat warm, but I'm going to be a driver owner now, and I'm going to drive to 45. And that could be. That could very well be. Uh, Kurt's 43 years old. Maybe he wants to get out of the, the riskiness of NASCAR, but it doesn't seem like that's where he's at yet. Maybe it's a two year, maybe it's a year and a half down the road. Maybe. Maybe he sees the opportunity the to grow as a develop as a driver developer to be kind of the driver so 
and and you see it in NASCAR. You see this coming. You you see it in in different in different ways. But there are guys. They are starting to to develop. They already have pit crew coaches, and they have each. They have engine. Their their engineers, and then they they have the spotters, and they have the crew chief. And the crew chief is managing everybody, right? And he manages the race. Does Kurt Busch come in as the, the, the current term is director of driver development? But, I mean, isn't that just a driver coach? Pretty much. Isn't that kind of a role where, isn't that what Jeff Gordon started off with? As yeah. Hendrick, once, he, once he hung up? Yep. Once he once he retired, is he was kind of in driver development or in competition? I think he had some something wrong. Competition was in his job title. Yeah. Before he went in, before he became the the vice chair, and running the day to day operations yeah. from Hendrick. So I'm, I, mm, I'm fine with it. It's it's a good, good concept. Um, we'll see. So I don't know. So, so the. The race number, the car numbers that they have yep. right now. So they can't take the 11 because that, that that's Joe Gibbs's number. Yep. I doubt they'd say you, you can take the number with you if you get a third charter. I mean, leave. Michael Jordan or, or, or Joe Gibbs did, never gave up the 20. The, the 20 is Christopher Bell. No, it wasn't. It was Tony Stewart. Oh. Oh. Tony Stewart is what brought that 20 team into the mass fandom that it got. I don't know. You that was before your NASCAR time. Yeah, that that, that was your NASCAR time. Caring about NASCAR. doesn't really predate the show all that much, um, except for you let me talk about it a little bit when we would hang out, and you'd be like, okay, uh huh. Now you got into it. I do. But so, so I don't know. I mean, the, the nine's taken up. So there, that that's the three numbers you know Michael Jordan from. The nine when he worked when he did the Olympics and then 23 and 45, which are the car numbers that are currently out there. Yeah. Um, either way, numbers are numbers. They'll find it. I don't know. Just something. Right, so the other driver they'll making find it. headlines is uh, Ty Dillon. He's going to leave Petty GMS. Yeah. He's not sure where he's going, though. But it won't be with Petty GMS. Yeah, and and this is where you're gonna start seeing drivers start announcing what's going on in their lives and where they're that they're leaving or hopefully signing and stuff like that. Um, and especially once one domino starts to fall, you'll start seeing more and more of it. Uh, and we'll play shuffle until next spring when everybody has a car or somebody's left in a with the music stops playing and nobody and somebody doesn't have a seat, um, which is possible. Kind of what happened with. Yeah, that, that's what happened with uh, De Benedetto. He's yeah. down in the trucks. He's racing in the trucks because he couldn't find a seat. Or one of my, or the smartest driver in NASCAR. Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman. He didn't so. retire, but he also didn't. Doesn't have a drive. Also, doesn't have a car. Doesn't have a car. So, okay. Um, Rich, this has been the NASCAR Corner. Presented by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois. Check them out for all your sports memorabilia needs, either in in person at the store in on Fifth Avenue, or on their eBay store. Once again, that is Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Let's keep making left turns as we head to the MLB. We are getting All Star Break is next week. We got three games before that but rich the cubs win category we did not add any numbers to it they are still at 34 wins and now they went from 50 to 55 losses (sighs) yeah so that puts them 15 and a half games back in the division 12 and a half back from the wild card and Mike, somehow we both talked ourselves into saying, "You know what? They'll get three wins this week," and they came away with zero. The Orioles. 
They played the Orioles. We should have gotten at least two. I know the it Orioles are hot. Two game. I, I think it was only a two oh, game. Oh, yeah, you're right. It was two. They should have at least gotten two wins this week. And now they got nothing. Uh, Rich. Yeah, about the about the only good thing to come out of Cubby Land probably was that uh, Ian Happ made the All Star team. Yeah, I saw that. Reserve. Yeah, that's good. Um, that's really about it. That's about it. So nobody's been traded yet. It, it, even though you know it's going to happen. We're heading into All Star Week. This is when deals uh, when deals start to get done. Now until the end of, of next month is when you start seeing these deals get done. And, uh, yeah, I would expect um, – Wilson Contreras, I don't know that he he's a Cub in next month. Yep. I, I think he is going to be the one guy that leaves. Um, Ian Happ, you might see – he might get some – somebody might – Take a sniff at him. Um, Anybody else? Then it turns into can you either protect them from having bad starts or if, if you're a pitcher or a reliever, can you protect them to say, hey, well, the, the guy's been doing great lately, but he hasn't appeared in any games. Well, we can't help that. We, we don't have any situations to put him into. Yeah. Or do you throw guys out there to make them – to have more, so teams have more tape on them to say, hey, this guy can help your bullpen. Who's, who do you we'll think we can take one? Who on that list? Who in our pitching staff is on the list? In general, I don't think there's any starters because Kyle's not having a breakout year, and I don't nope. think anybody would want to. He's, st- I think he's still on a team friendly deal, so I'd say really you're you're looking at bullpen guys. Like Mikel Givens and David Robinson, and I think those are the only two real names that you're you're really going to get any sniffing at. I mean, maybe if a team is looking for catching depth, you could even I wouldn't even be surprised if they traded away Jan Gomes. Yeah, I mean, I, you're right, and Wilson, and yeah. Wilson. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, they both could bring some decent trade value. Yeah, I mean, at this point, for with guys that are on the major league roster, I don't think, I don't think any of them are untouchable. I, Maybe I agree. Nico Horner. No, I, I know one that's Horner, untouchable. One that's untouchable. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jason Hayward. Because his contract is such garbage that the amount that we would have to spend to have someone take him away is ridiculous. But in the odd event that you tried to make offers on him and you got something for him. We'll pay half of his salary? If you can get an agreeable deal for someone like Jason Hayward, you, you take it, even if it's pennies on the dollar. You, you take it because at least you're getting something for him. So you're saying if we paid 99% of his contract for the next three years? Yeah, you're right. That That's not going to happen. But in theory, I mean, if he was having a good enough year, which he isn't, and you had somebody make a decent offer, and you're not having to pay down that con, pay eighty percent of that contract. If we weren't paying him stupid money these next few years, why would Jason tell me a team that Jason Hayward makes the major league roster on? He, he, I don't think he does. The way he's been playing almost since the World Series year, no. That there's no team that would there's that no. would take him in a deal. So yeah, the, in, in theory, yeah, but be, due to his contract, he's untouchable. No one's going to take him. And the only other player I can think of Ooh. would be Nico Horner, that's on the current roster. I have I have a trade concept for you. All right. Would. And they won't. Would St. Louis take Jason Hayward? Bring back the Walker Brigade, if you will. 
all the guys that are all the I mean all their retiring guys this year. They're if they make the playoffs, probably won't. I don't think. I think Milwaukee's a team out of the Central going to make the playoffs. But if they make the playoffs, they don't have the depth to go di- the distance, and they've already made it clear that they're going to leave and let these aged players that are this is their last year. They have what three of them already? Yeah, Wainwright, Pujols, and Molina. Obviously, they're not in any condition to make a run in the playoffs. And they're not going to cut those guys. They're letting those guys play out. Jason Hayward says, guys, I I think I'm calling it quits. I'm retiring. Can we trade him over to the – did the Cardinals take him back to kind of bring that love back? Because they love doing that. They really do love doing things like that. No, I, I think there there would still have to be a, it wouldn't be a we'll give you a conditional low A lottery ticket, low A guy that might never make it above double A for him because there's still that money involved. It but, wouldn't be a straight we're gonna take But take he the guar- he guarantees that he's gonna retire at the end of the year. They're no longer on the hook for the rest of the contract. Let's say for some. Uh, other than the deferred money that they've already committed to. Right, but the Cubs are already on the hook for that. But yeah, but the Cubs the, are paying. The Cubs pay that. That's Cubs money payment no matter what. Even if they, even if the Cardinals said we'll take 100% of his contract, the deferred money does not get taken from the Cardinals. It's only the Cubs that pay that. Those are, that's the funds are, it's already spent. It's money that's been spent. It just hasn't been put out. If we want to use your, the it's, it's the cash that's in the envelope to pay the bill for the credit card, right? Is that I'm, I think I'm doing that right, right? Yeah, right. Sure. Okay. Um, but if the cash is in the envelope, you just haven't paid the bill. That's 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 what that money is. That's that deferred money. But if he says, "Here's the paperwork. I'm retiring at the end of the year. The contract's null and void at the end of the year." Would St. Louis take it to be that so long tour that uh, I still that the rest of the so team is on? I don't think so because when I think Jason Hayward, before he, I guess if you're looking at Jason Hayward wanting a homecoming or goodbye see, tour, spending team going back to a team that he has a lot of history with, that would be Atlanta. I was. Not St. Louis. Okay, I mean he did he did what three years in St. Louis, two or three years I think. Yeah, he had his career year that got him the Cubs the, the contract that he's milking from the Cubs. He, he got his ring one in career Saint, year. He got one ring he got in St. Louis. In Chicago. I, didn't he get one in St. Louis? I don't think so. I thought he got one in St. Louis in the early two thousands. Okay, maybe not. Either way, I don't think he did. Either way. I would I would put him uh, that would be the only way we could th- conceptually maybe almost pray to God that we can get that contract ri- get rid of that contract. I don't think it's going to happen. My pray that that's that's what happens. It won't. Don't expect that okay. to happen, folks. But yeah. All okay. Right, so Mike, three games with the Mets before we hit the All Star break. Yep. And um, one of them, two of them games. are a double header. Yeah. So, double header, yeah. hard to sweep a double header. Mm-hmm. But the Cubs suck. They, they apparently, when Joe left, he took all those shirts with him. They forgot, try not to suck. Well, well now I think it's embrace the suck. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> sure, embrace the suck. So uh, we've embraced the suck. I'm embracing the suck. We're going to get zero wins this week. I'm going to give them one, but it's only because of that double header. Okay. Uh, Rich, uh, we forgot to make uh, – unless I don't see it on here. Yeah, you don't have it on here. What do you want to do? 
National or American League? National or American League? I'm going to go with the American League. I like that pick. I actually think... I think the American League's the right spot to go with on that, and I that's where that's what I was gonna pick too. So we both okay. picked the American League. All right. So Mike, because we, we wanna make sure that we give some football talk and yep. since we're more or less kind of shooting from the hip on the NFL talk, let's let's stay let's save the standings predictions check for next week. Okay. Sounds um, good. So uh, the Blue Jays let go of their manager, Charlie Montoyo. As the Blue Jays, even though they're 46 and 22, decided that's not good enough and let them go. Third manager fired this year. Yeah, it's surprising that it's three. The that it's three before the All Star break. Normally, you start seeing it happen at the All Star break. Um, you start, I think you start hearing rumbling about who could be on the hot seat around the all-star break but the firings don't happen until like september you you hear some rumblings and most of the firings don't happen until september but you'll have one or maybe at worst two guys fired before in in august but to have three already are we gonna see more by the time september comes who do you think's on the hot seat that hasn't already let go of their manager. Let, let me. I, I want to take a look at the standings here to okay. get you a good answer. Let's do that next week. Next week we're going to talk. Next week, okay. Prediction the 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 prediction check. We're going to talk talk uh, who's who's on the hot coach's hot seat and uh, whatnot. Um, and then uh, the major leagues have settled with the minor leaguers that have been cut right because of the the. The, contri- the way I understood, the way I, I just kind of skimmed the article uh, tonight, and it was some former player, a former minor league player, sued the MLB for violating minimum wage and overtime rules as oh. minor leaguers. So it uh, sounds like it was a class action suit. Okay. So the people in the suit get to split one hundred eighty-five million dollars because the mine. Uh, MLB settled with the minor leaguers. That was not the suit that I had heard about then. I had heard that there was a minor league a, a suit from players, and I don't know if it's gone anywhere, from a lot of the players that were constricted out because of the the constriction or the, the, the elimination of minor leagues. Uh, oh, uh, no. Okay, okay, with teams being contracted. Yeah. I, I thought that had been... I, I did not know. I haven't seen where that one has gone. I don't know if it's even if it's been dismissed or not but i knew that 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 was a suit i thought that's what that suit was okay well i yeah i mean does mj qualify for this does who mj mj michael jordan when he was a minor leaguer i i think you had to have been in the suit involved in the suit i don't think it's going to go back retroactively to but he could, all minor leaguers. But again, I and mean, I guess technically Michael could as a as a it's for qualifying. I mean, it, it, did he serve in the time when it would have been that he could have joined the the lawsuit? I I, I don't know. Does Tim Tebow qualify? He could. In theory, I guess they could. If you're saying any minor leaguer that played. In the minors from this year to this year, you could join this class action lawsuit. Um, yeah, and there's a whole bunch of legalese in there that says uh, don't. Yeah, but anyway. Um, okay, Rich, we're going to start doing our divisional previews. Previews are just talking about teams that play in those divisions. Yeah. As to kind of get started on our NFL. So, um you want to go before, NFC or AFC first? Let's go, be, because we kind of talked about it a little bit on last week with Baker Mayfield going to the Panthers. Okay, let's, let's go let's NFC. Let's start with the AF. Let's oh. go with the NFC. N. NFC, okay. NFC. We're going with the NFC because we talked Baker Mayfield now at the Panthers. I think that improves the team significantly. Um, 
I don't think Sam Darnold was the answer. If he was last year, he would have proven it uh, in the limited play he got with only five wins. I, there's nothing there that tells me that the, you wouldn't have brought in Baker if you thought Sam Darnold was the answer. Um, honestly, you wouldn't. And so I think Baker Mayfield uh, makes that team stronger. And I'm going to say Baker Mayfield is the second best quarterback in that division. Yes, I can give you second best quarterback in that division, but that's also not saying that much when the other teams in the division, not Baker, not Tom Brady, are Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota, Sam Darnold, and is it Blaine Gabbard or Andy Dalton? Kyle Trask. Andy Dalton, Kyle Trask. Either way. Baker's the second best quarterback in that division. Yeah, it, that it might, gives that I, I team a, a lot more qualities. I'm telling you, I'm still, I'm, I, I wish I could double down. I, I don't want to make a second bet, but I wholeheartedly think there is a good possibility that the Panthers make the playoffs this year. What it, were the br- might, the more? I, I know when you originally said it, I, I was kind of skeptical. I was like, mm, I don't know, but you look at the other teams. You'll probably find out when we when we make our predictions for divisions and wild cards. I for me, because I I kind of already have them penciled in on on the prediction workbook. For me, I was having a trouble trying to determine who that third wild card is going to go to. So I'm starting to I'm starting to buy in and seriously consider putting penciling in the Panthers for that wild card spot. Okay. 2016. But ultimately, it depends on what what happens with Christian McCaffrey. 2016. I thought Darnold, you looked up the numbers that Sam Darnold put up when McCaffrey was healthy. They, he was. That's when that's when Carolina was on their long winning streak. Yeah. Went on their long winning streak. So I think ultimately, how well the Panthers do still hinges on Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey, because I don't know if Baker Mayfield could prop up that offense if McCaffrey goes down any more than any better than Darnold could. Okay. Um, even better. Man, this, this does so much better for me. Okay, 2016. What was the Browns' record? 4-12. One and fifteen. Okay. Twenty seventeen. What was their record? Four and twelve. Oh and sixteen. Okay. Baker May- Mayfield gets drafted in twenty eighteen. They win seven games and they tie a game. Twenty nineteen. He had a little regression. They only won six games. By the way, this is the Browns we're talking about. At the time, the Browns were not great anywhere else. They did not have the tools they had in 2020. Let's look at 2020. What did he do? He got them in the playoffs with 11 wins. This is the Browns. Did you start this 2016? 2016. Okay. 2021. Playing injured, playing injured, he still got them eight wins. In that same time frame, of 2018, the Panthers only got five wins. An injured Baker Mayfield provided more wins to his team than Sam Darnold combined with Cam Newton I'm pretty sure those were their two quarterbacks last year right? Yes, Newton and uh, Darnold last year So you're telling me you put Baker Mayfield on that team he doesn't at least get him six 
seven. Not mm-hmm. by himself. Nine going wins. To need, he's going to need. You're right. He will McCaffrey. need. Him. But if him and McCaffrey are healthy, they're going to be a 10 win team. I mean, yeah, th- th- I could see. I'll I could double see down that nine way. to 10 wins if McCaffrey is healthy. I'll double down that way. That's my double down. There you go. I figured out how to double down. Last week I said they're going to make the playoffs. This week I say they make 10 wins if they both are healthy. Period. I'll put it out there. By the way, 10 wins. The 49ers had 10 wins last year and made the playoffs. 10 wins gets you in the playoffs. Went to the the championship game even. It's true. 10 wins gets you in the playoffs. Panthers are making the playoffs. So, we've spent a lot of time with the Panthers. The Saints, Rich, what are they going to do? The Saints, I think it all depends on what the NFL decides to do about Alvin Kamara. Everybody on this entire offseason, you haven't heard anything about Alvin Kamara and him and his posse beat up a guy in the in a Las Vegas hotel lobby during the Pro Bowl, yeah, and there's been no talk about any possible suspension or fine that he could that he could uh, have thrown against him. Yeah, um, and the Saints have shown that when Alvin Kamara is injured, their offense just slows down and just becomes very predictable, and they they don't win football games without him. The bigger problem is, I I think you're right. I think that's a that's a good point. I'm telling you the bigger problem in this whole thing. Who's who's the quarterback there? Who's running that offense, period? As of now, they're going to go with Jameis Winston. 30 for 30. You're talking... 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions, yes. The only quarterback to do that. To be that terrible of a player. Come on, man. Um, Once again, I mean, he showed flashes with Sean Payton calling the plays and keeping him reined in. Oh, wait, 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 wait. But Sean Payton's not there anymore. That's right. That's the other side of the coin. You you don't have Sean Payton. Yeah, I. the Saints are going to go back to the Aints. That's my prediction this year for the Saints. The Falcons lost Matt Ryan this year. Uh and as we'll talk about him when we get over to the AFC South. Um, so, thoughts on the Falcons' pr- prospects this year? Not good, Mike. Not good. Um, I think that they're going to wind up with the top three pick, if not the number one pick. Marcus Mariota hasn't been the starter in the league since he, what, at least three years? maybe even three years, and he's projected uh, yeah. to keep the seat warm for Desmond Ritter, who is a third-round pick. Yeah. Um, it's going to be rough, and they're without their best player, Calvin Ridley, as he got suspended indefinitely for gambling Wait, on NFL games while he was he, on the injured list and away from the team. He, he, per, he performed a legal action. Yes that didn't harm anybody. Mm-hmm. He didn't have contact with the team. And yet he's suspended indefinitely? By the way, it's probably just going to be a year. Probably. It's, it's it's a minimum of a one-year suspension. It's a minimum of a one-year oh, yeah. So... Oh. Man, that's terrible. Yeah, there, um, there's a chance that Calvin Ridley could get more games than Deshaun Watson because he gambled on NFL games legally. Or Alvin Kamara. Or Alvin Kamara, who beat the crap out of a guy. Posse, beat the crap out of a guy for saying the wrong words to his posse while you yeah. while they were walking past each other in the hotel lobby. Yeah. Um, so. But that's a topic for another day when we know for sure yes. how many games Deshaun Watson is going to get, how many games Alvin Kamara is going to get, so or let's, anybody else for that matter. 
yeah. things can happen between now and the start of the regular season. Um, Rich, I'm gonna me, I'm gonna curb the conversation a little bit. Okay. Is there one player on the Atlanta Falcons that you are gonna draft in any of your fantasy drafts? I think the only guy that who man, if he had to twist my arm and said you you got to draft somebody from every team, I think the only guy that's really fantasy relevant on that team would probably be Kyle Pitts. But even with Matt Ryan, I think even with Matt Ryan under quarterback, I don't think he had too many touchdowns. And if you can't get fantasy wise, if you can't get Kittle. Kittle or Kelsey, you need a you at least need a tight end that can at least be get you those short yardage touchdowns. And Kyle Pitts didn't even get those for you. Ooh, I know the one guy, the one guy I'm gonna draft if I have to draft somebody from the Atlanta Falcons. And who's that? Young Ho Koo. Ah, that's the kicker because they could be kicking a lot of field goals. They could be kicking lots of field goals. So I did forget about Koo. Young Hoku. That's the Koo. only player I would draft from the Atlanta Falcons if I but forget. But the thing with Koo, though, is if the team's going to be bad, they could also get shut out a lot. They could. I'm just I, – I agree, but he's – he actually is a pretty decent kicker. He is. A he, lot of 50-yard field goals from Koo. Yeah. So Koo, Koo would be the one guy I would like – I would think about if I was going to draft anybody – off of the Falcons. Okay. Oh, uh, AFC South, Mike. Oh, we, did of, you want to touch any bases on uh, on um, Tampa Bay? I mean, they have Tom Brady. I, They're the only people they lost. They lost Kenny, Gronk. They lost Gronk. They lost in a numkin too. By the way, uh, if you listen to Gronk, they lost Gronk. If you listen to Gronk's uh, Gronk's agent. I'm not quite sure is basically what he's been saying. So, yeah. Okay, let's head over to the AFC. So, yeah, that's basically it. The, the Bucks it, look to the be. the Buccaneers division to lose. Yeah. And I think it's going to take multiple injuries for that to happen. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the AFC South. Um, man, the team that won the division last year, could they be a third-place team? I don't think the Titans will be a third-place team, Mike. Okay, you're like, right. They haven't fallen that much. I mean, look at the bottom two are the worst two. I think the the Panthers, uh, not the Panthers, the, uh, Jaguars? the Jaguars are going to be better than they were last year. So there's not enough to leapfrog into into second place in the division without three wins and a tie. Injuries happening. So they'll get three the, wins and a tie. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the Texans, they, they, the Texans are. I think are still going to be bad this year. Yeah, I don't see any improvements on the Texans. The Colts, however, did get Matt Ryan. Um, and I think that's an upgrade from Carson Wentz. Yeah, I can agree with that. And and a Carson Wentz-led Colts team almost got into the playoffs. Yeah. Almost. The, yeah, I feel bad for everyone that's not a quarterback on that uh, on the on the Colts right now, that Colts team is built to be a great team. Their their big uglies are some of the best big uglies you'll find in the league, on both sides of the ball. By the way, mm-hmm. yep. And they're they 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 don't have anybody in wide receiver that makes you run out and pick them up early in a, in a draft. But they have a bunch of guys that will produce when it comes time. Yeah. I th- me and Michael Pittman's I think, could be a wide receiver. If you choose to target other positions and, and wait on your wide receivers, Michael Pittman would be probably be a good guy to have. Yeah. Good guy to grab late to be either be a backup to fill in for buys or maybe even be your third wide receiver. But uh, Jonathan Taylor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jonathan Taylor is going to be a great running back. And I think that's really what the Colts want to do is they want to run the ball. They're going to be – They want to run the ball and have Matt Ryan there to take care of third downs and short yeah. yardage. 
He doesn't need to be the game saver and guy that's going to put up 300, 350 yards, 400 yard games every single week. He doesn't need to do that. Um. So the other side of that whole equation, Rich, who is this team built around? You're looking at Are we here. still on the Colts? Yes. I have to say it's Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor and the offensive line. I'm actually going to disagree with you on this. All right. This team, and it's it's a year and a half removed, but this team was built around Andrew Luck. The Colts were built around Andrew Luck. That's what they were hoping for. That's what they were expecting. That's what they were planning on. Andrew Luck leaves. Andrew Luck is known for being a smart guy. Matt Ryan? Maybe not as gifted intelligent-wise, but because of his longevity in the, in the, in the league, has built up knowledge. Matt Ryan's going to be a great fit in this offense. He is going to be – he will look like a great quarterback this year. By the way, Matt Ryan, I would argue, is better than what he ever got credit for while he was in Atlanta, bringing the Atlanta Falcons to the Super Bowl. Letting his defense collapsing and his coach playing safety – and trying to run out the clock and not let Matt do his thing cost him a Super Bowl. So, yeah, I would look for – that's going to be a great team. I actually – Matt Ryan is a quarterback, I would think, not your first-tier quarterback, but he's a high second-tier quarterback, especially with this offense that they're looking at there. Um, the running game is going to make it so that uh, – and having Michael Pittman um, – you look for him to be great in your fantasy this year. Uh, pick up Matt Ryan if you can. Okay. Um, let's look at other teams in the AFC South. Uh, we kind of said it already. I mean, we've kind of gone through. Rich, the downfall. Of, oh, how the Titans have fallen. I, I don't know if they've quite fallen, but... It wouldn't surprise I, – I still have them making the playoffs. Ooh, okay. But – but I they're not as good as they were last year. They chose to save money at wide receiver by letting A.J. Brown go. Okay, yeah. And supposedly they drafted a comparable player as a rookie in Chevron Burks. But, I mean, a rookie – a, a rookie, a, a wide receiver is probably the easiest rookie to integrate into an offense, but you, there's still some unknown there. And you know what you got in Tannehill. So it, you're, it, Tannehill, you, you know what you got. He's not going to get any better. He's only going to get worse. Yeah. Yeah. Which is probably why they went and took a chance on drafting Malik Willis. Yeah. Malik Willis probably isn't going to see the field this year. He, but, I think I actually don't have the Titans currently, as I see it, in the playoffs. Um, we started seeing teams able to uh, able to defend them better and better. Mm-hmm. Last year, people are starting to catch on to how to kind of contain them a little bit more. Um, and like you said, Ryan Tana thrill. Uh, isn't going to be able the to put up the numbers. Gone. The I, I thrill think is the gone. The thrill is gone. Yeah. Great, great job on that one. Yeah. The, so, I would be surprised if they make nine wins. I think they're going to make the playoffs only because while you could probably make a case that any of the teams, any of the four teams in the in the West could make the playoffs. Yep. Raiders, Chiefs, Bolts, Broncos. Only. But because of the because they're having to play each other twice a year, 
one of their records is not going to be good enough to make the playoffs, and I think that's where the Titans sneak in and get a playoff spot. Yeah. Because they have an easier divisional schedule. But the bill, but the the and and again, we're not we're not talking the East, we're not talking the North, and we're not talking the West this week. But the East is going to put into the Dolphins. Don't count the Dolphins out this year. I think I think that we could see. I think we could. You could see three from one division this year. Um, you and, know what? And I you're, think you're right, Mike. I, I, I did think, forget. I think, I'm going to take the Titans out. You you did convince me there. I did kind of forget about what the Dolphins have done, and what the Patriots have done. So I think one of those two teams is probably going to make the playoffs. The Titans are out. I think we're going to talk about it in next week or two weeks. I don't remember when we talk about the East. Um, we have the East next week. So we'll talk about the East next week, and we'll get into that a little bit more. But, yeah, I, I don't see the Titans making the playoffs. I don't know that they make ten wins. Nine, I think, is their ceiling this year. Nine wins is Nine wins can make the playoffs. But I don't think it's nine wins. I think it's nine wins and a tie the same way that it was last year. I don't think it's nine win, nine wins, eight losses. I think you have to have nine wins and a tie, um, especially with the new rules and how ties are so much easier to get in football now. So I, I'm, I'm not on it. I, I think the Titans are, are – I think the Titans – Truly, do need to go into rebuild mode and uh, get it figured out before, uh, and before the league passes them by, because right. they're on the cusp of being passed by and and not being a team that that's relevant at all. Uh, so I would say look for them. Hopefully, they they catch on to that and they start making some moves to improve. And uh, I think the the spot that they need to do that we've already talked about it. Tannehill needs to be out. You need somebody. You need a better quarterback in there. Um, and they beat, right. So, yeah. Jacksonville. Can they get to six wins? Just throwing a number out there. I don't know what their over-under is. Can they at least get the six wins? Because that's an improvement from what they had last year. They only had three last year. So, can they double the win total and get to six wins? Um, let me bring up their schedule real quick. Not looking at their schedule, I almost think that they can. I think Doug Peterson's the right quarterback, or the the right coach for Trevor Lawrence, so he's probably going to have a chance to have a competent offense built around him instead of whatever whatever it was Urban Meyer was wanting to do. I think it's a possibility. I will give them... If the over-under is six, I don't make that bet because I think it I think it probably ends up as a push. If the over-under is six and a half, I bet the under. If the over-under is five and a half, I bet the over. Fair enough? Yeah. I think six is a good number. Um... But, yeah. Okay, Rich. Anything on either side of the South that you want to talk about before we head into our quick hits? Not really. Okay. So, uh, let's get into the quick hits. Um, so, next week, uh, we're going to be talking about the East, yep. NFC, and the AFC. So, Brittany Garner uh, pled guilty and apparently had a doctor's note for the substances that she had on her. However, it was still illegal and she pled guilty. So um, if you don't know, she got arrested for apparently having drug paraphernalia and drugs on her trying to leave the country of Russia. Um, Even she was there playing as a professional basketball player, making more money than, by the way, this is this is where I think the real problem is making more money in Russia than she was making mo- than she would have been made, making money here in the United States as a professional basketball player. Um, I mean, not so yeah. I mean, it, it's still a crime. Technically, if 
marijuana, I mean, medical and recreational marijuana is legal in Illinois. Yep. It's not legal in Iowa. Yep. So if you technically, if you got busted with legal marijuana that you bought in Illinois, but you brought it to Iowa, technically you broke the law. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's kind of where Brittany Gaynor is at. I mean, by all means, with the political landscape that we're in right now, does the crime, does the punishment fit the crime? No, and it won't. No. It no, won't no, ever. No, it won't. Because right now she's a political pawn. And, and I'm sad about that. That, she, that. Nobody deserves to be that, but that's what she is right now. Um, and she's never going to be any more than that for time out. She is a human being. She is loved by Jesus. She is much more than a political pawn, and she should be. But in this game right now, in this crime, in all of this, all of this that's going on, she will not be more than uh, a political pawn in this process, no matter what happens. It sucks. You know, one thing I'm almost, and it just came to me while we were while we were talking about it, but we're, I'm almost wondering if the State Department chose, was telling people, get out of Russia, get out of Ukraine. They have been. No matter what, no matter what you're, why you're in the country there, to begin with, if, if the Russian oligarchs that, if the Russian oligarch that owns this professional base basketball team that's way overpaying to have Brittany Gaynor on his team. I don't know that it's way overpaid. She's a great basketball player. She is. Let's not let's not say that she's overpaid. She's not making LeBron James money. She's not making no. or, or NBA the, money. Problem, all right. But but she she's the, she's the ringer on that team. Right. She by probably when you compare her salary with her teammate's salary, there's probably a pretty big gap there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I was almost coming to think and wondering, mean, where where's the Russian oligarch at? So why wasn't he again to fly her out on like a private jet, not on a commercial flight? So to get her out of the country. Apparently, she was getting she was in the process of getting out as assets and money were being seized from the oligarchs. I don't know if it happened to the one that was financing her to be there. I I'm not as up to date on that as I should be but because of a lot of the the planes were not allowed to land in countries uh, because of that because of who who owned them Uh, they at the time they thought they it was going to help so she was trying to fly out commercially Um, it didn't it didn't work Uh, and she's kind of messed up and it's not a good thing I'm not yeah it's sad um, <coughs> she, so did you hear what LeBron James had to say about the situation I did not on his uh, podcast of the shop he said that uh, it, it's a tragedy to Brittany Gaynor is still being held there and the US isn't doing more to get her freed he said on the back end of his comment if I were Brittany Gaynor, maybe I wouldn't want to come back because the U.S. doesn't have my back. I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to touch yeah, it. Let's I, move on to the next topic because... I, I, don't know what, I don't know what to think of that one either. It's nice when you can say that from the comfort of your million and a half dollar, your multi-million dollar mansion that you own. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Uh, The Houston Texans have settled with uh, the Deshaun Watson accusers that had added them to the lawsuit uh, for arranging the meetups, even understanding what was going on. Thirty people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which there's only been twenty four that brought cases against Deshaun Watson. Yeah, this is. uh, By the way, that gets a little uglier, and I, ooh man, that whole situation. Uh, we'll talk about it more at some point as we get more with as as things like this happen as the team settles like I think that makes it makes his case even worse um, and as yeah, it, I mean, yeah. There, it was a very generic statement of 
we're not admitting any wrongdoing, but we want to do the right thing. I think it came down to we want to do the right thing, yeah. or which basically they want to cover themselves. They want to be as far away from the Deshaun Watson yeah. business as they can. So, yep. Um, by the way, and uh, I hate doing this because it's a rabbit trail. We and and I'm gonna I'll ask it now. You can it, you, you can you can put a pin in it if, if you choose to. Um, but if you were an NFL owner, would you be a Jerry Jones, or would you be whoever owns the Houston Texans and kind of let it run as a corporation and you're just at the top, enjoying the fact that you own the team? We don't have to answer it. I I know where I sit. But I don't know where you sit, and I—if you want to talk about it now, we can, or we can move on to the last topic. And it's been an hour and ten minutes that we've been doing this. I, I think that I, I'd have to be the—I I'd almost like to be the the owner that doesn't step in, maybe steps in to make the tough decisions. Okay. But not the guy running, doing, acting like Jerry Jones, being that he's the sole decision maker, GM owner see i would i would actually probably be more of a jerry jones type um i think if you're going to if you're going to own a team and you're going to hire people that have some question like most football players have some questionable issues in their background and you're putting them on display for millions of people to watch every week um i think you got to be a little bit more integrated now the hard part is yeah. is that if this happened and you were more integrated if it happened in in dallas a if it happened in dallas nobody would ever know about it because jerry would have handled it in his own way but if it happened to a team that had an owner like jerry jones that knew everything and knew the ins and outs that actually would be even worse but that being said uh i, I would snip it in the butt a lot quicker than what apparently has happened as an owner. So, um, okay. Uh, anything else on the Deshaun Watson stuff and, or that question? Not really. I mean, okay. I think it's from the Texans perspective. I think they've, since it's come out, I think they've handled it about as well as you could. But, I mean, they, and, they, and as more things could've. come out though, they didn't handle the situation internally in a good way. They've shot themselves in the foot because they knew what was going on. There was more... Well, they're claiming that they didn't know what was going on. They knew he had excessive amounts of personal masseuses and helped arrange for them to happen and never questioned why he never had the same one twice. So, I think it's going to look for the more the stuff comes out, the the worse they look. Okay, uh, Tiger Woods has not officially, but he basically made the statement today that he probably will never play at St Andrews for the British Open uh, again. Really? Yeah, he he tweeted out basically saying that he probably he didn't think he would he he thinks he might be able to make the British Open he does not think he'll ever be able to make it, it, it's gonna it's eight years before the British Open is, is at St. Andrews oh okay so th- the British is one of those be... rotating ones and St. Andrews gotcha. it's every eight years and so Tiger's not gonna make it eight more years of, of professional level golf and he's also said that he will never play on the uh, senior tour so um so yeah, that would have been a rough day for him to finally see that writing on the wall and realize this is yeah, this is it. Did he make the cut for the Open? Oh no, 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 no. No. Um, last I saw, the cut was going to be nine or was going to be even. Tiger was plus nine. Mm. So, still a remarkable story about how he was able to come back with the type of accident that he had, though. I hope. I hope he opens up about that in the next in the next few years. 
Like, he doesn't open up about stuff. But I hope that's one thing that he we might be able to get him to open up on. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rich, any shout-outs before we – how did your nephew do last week at the in his tournaments? Um, they won their tournament. Yeah. So they, Go they JD. They went undefeated. They, their, their team went undefeated and – um, um, Esterville. The championship game was a one-hit shutout. Wow. One-hit shutout in a three-inning game, which got called. No, I think it went four. In a four-inning game, which got called due to the run differential. Okay. So his team is good. Good for him. Yeah. Um, yeah, his team was good. Um, and um, but also to JD himself, it was his birthday on Thursday. Ooh, his nice! Birthday Happy on, uh, birthday, yeah. JD. It was his birthday yesterday. Uh, we also uh, need to shout out um, to uh, the Esterville boys baseball and girls softball. I believe both made state this week. So, been a big year up here for uh, Esterville sports. Yeah, that they joined the basket, the girls basketball team, which won state. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, we'll give you, I'll give you another, I'll give you an update next week as, uh, as I have it. Um, but rich people are watching us on Facebook. They want to take us home or take us on the road with them. They don't want to watch us. They want to listen. What should they do? Um, look us up wherever you find your other podcast that you subscribe to look for us falls and six, the podcast. Uh, you'll see the two of us in tuxedos looking like we're about to step up to the plate with baseball bats. Yep. And if you are listening to us on those podcast platforms, but you want to see our faces, uh, you could. There's two ways to do it. If you want to do it live, follow us on at on Facebook at facebook.com/ballsandsticks, and you can uh, you can watch us live, and you'll get notifications if you follow us there. If you are if you don't want to if you don't like Facebook, you don't want to be any part of us live. Uh, you can check us out on YouTube. We generally go live. We generally go there a day or two afterwards. About the same. I mean, it's the exact same time that your podcast would would get uploaded is when we upload the YouTube. So I try to do that shortly after. Yeah, and Mike, how else can uh, can uh, fans that uh, might be listening to us? How else can they interact with our show? Um, get involved. We have. If you want to participate in our poll questions. Like the join the uh, the fans of Balls and Sticks page, and we're on Twitter. Um, yeah, but I, I was more talking about our fantasy football league. Which oh is yeah, open. it's open. It, there's a link for that. Yeah, there's a link for the where you can uh, join our league. Yep. Uh, in the descriptions of the three places where we post our episodes: yep. Facebook, YouTube, and in the descriptions on the podcast like, yeah it's so join everywhere the league, there's still eight slots left yep so make sure to join before we got to turn it public and random people could join the league that may not have never even heard of the show yes before yes join the league i know it sounds early but we're a month away from from games happening so i mean preseason but still yeah you ready for some football rich I am ready for some football. Mike. Okay, Rich. Let's. What should I do? Uh, Mike, go ahead and roll the outro. <laughs> Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa. This is Balls and Sticks, the podcast with your hosts, Mike and Rich.